And we turn now to our next item of business, which is topical questions. We'll start with question number one from Gordon MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the recent Migration Advisory Committee report and its implications for Scotland. Minister Ben McPherson. Thank you, President Officer. As this is my uh, first time speaking as Minister, I first wish to draw members' attention to my voluntary register of interests. Uh, for transparency, I refer the Chamber to that voluntary interest that uh, my partner is employed by Christian Aid in Scotland. And also, coming, before coming directly to Gordon MacDonald's question, in, in relevance to it, I think it's important to say as new minister that inward migration is crucial to Scotland's growth and prosperity. People who choose to make Scotland their home provide a vital contribution to our country's economy, enhance our collective social and cultural well-being, and help to make Scotland the open and forward-looking nation that it is today. Since the Brexit vote, the Scottish Government has been consistently clear that we unequivocally value and welcome the positive contribution that migrants make to our country. And as new minister, I want to make that affirmation absolutely clearly today. The report from the Migration Advisory Committee, or MAC, that was published earlier this morning will be of deep disappointment to businesses and employers across Scotland. Employers wanted a system which recognised the importance of EAA citizens, which was simple and low cost, which met the needs of their sectors. And furthermore, as the report from British Futures showed yesterday, people across Scotland also want a system that gives more responsibility to the Scottish Government, none of which was acknowledged in today's report. Therefore, going forward, this Government will continue to listen to business, and we will also need to ensure that we have enough healthcare professionals and teachers and other professionals working here in Scotland, that we have the workers for a thriving rural economy and that our universities are able to attract and retain talent from around the world. The Migration Advisory Committee was not asked to consider these issues, nor did it fully consider the social and cultural benefits that come from being an open, connected European nation. And therefore, this government will consider whether to commission further research and independent expert advice where necessary to ensure that Scotland's needs are taken into account. Gordon MacDonald. Do the recommendations made in this report not completely misunderstand much of the Scottish context of this? For example, that Scotland's demographic, demographic issues, our ageing population of working age, can be solved by raising the age of retirement Surely there are simpler, more effective ways than that to tackle a shortfall of workers in our public services. For example, by attracting more migrants of working age to live here. Minister. Absolutely. I think Gordon MacDonald raised these very important points there around demographics that were not considered appropriately or fully in the MAC report. All of our population increase here in Scotland over the next 25 years is due to come from migration, according to official statistics. However, the Migration Advisory Committee's report this morning does little to consider Scotland's needs and instead suggests that increasing the pension age quite remarkably, would be a preferential approach to managing demographic change. A completely unsustainable position and one which many across Scotland would reject and we in, in the Scottish Government do too. As we saw yesterday from the British Futures report based on ICM polling, there is clear public support for an approach here in Scotland which would give more powers to the Scottish Government accountable to this Parliament to develop a tailored approach to migration which meets the needs, uh, Scotland's distinct needs, and an approach which would be endorsed by this Parliament. Gordon MacDonald. The report does acknowledge that the devolution of immigration power is ultimately a political choice. The Scottish Government's outward-looking, welcoming, positive approach to immigration couldn't be further removed from the right-wing rhetoric emanating from the UK Government in the Brexit context. Indeed, yesterday's poll in the Herald showed that two-thirds of Scots want immigration powers devolved. Isn't it high time Westminster listened to those demands? Minister. Absolutely, and I think it's important to reiterate uh, 
that this report does acknowledge uh, at 7.72 that the devolution of immigration powers is ultimately a political choice. The Scottish Government's outward-looking, welcoming, positive approach to immigration couldn't be further removed from the right-wing rhetoric emanating from the UK Government. Gordon MacDonald is absolutely right to say that. The report a year ago from the Migration Observatory that they published specifically considered a regional migration system. They concluded that the arguments against regional visa, a regional visa system were not about practicalities, but about politics. And as has been mentioned already today, the report from the British Future published yesterday provided some very clear messages. Firstly, people do not trust the UK government to manage immigration. That was made abundantly clear in the report, with only 15% of people surveyed by ICM thinking that the UK government had managed immigration uh, into the UK competently or fairly. And indeed, to quote the British Futures report, the current immigration system does not command public trust and support. Secondly, and also very importantly to us here in this parliament, people were also clear when polled by ICM about the sort of change they want to see. 64% of people in Scotland agree that the governments in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland should have the power to decide how many visas are issued to people who want to work in those parts of the UK uh, and they agreed to this proposal. There is a clear and building and growing consensus that in order to meet the economic and demographic needs of Scotland, we need more powers to this parliament in order to create tailored solutions. It's time for the UK government to listen to the calls from business, civic society, universities, across civic society, and also listen to the people of Scotland who by two thirds believe that more powers should come to this parliament in order to manage our migration system in a more humane and forward looking manner. Pauline McNeill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, does the Minister agree that we should end the discrimination against EU workers referred to in the report? But the report said they were not convinced that the route for low-skilled uh, workers was one that should be created. And the Minister will be aware of the two-tier visa currency that applies to uh, a list of occupations where there is a shortage, such as cybersecurity, paediatrics, game designs and so on. So I do agree that Scotland should have a say in the immigration policy that should be fit for the whole of UK and I've argued this consistently. But I would like to know what list of occupations have the Scottish Government put forward for, uh, for that two-tier visa and what precise dialogue have ministers had to make the case for Scotland's interest to be addressed in that list of occupations because surely there must be a case put for low-skilled workers to be on that list. Minister. Thank you, Pauline McNeill, for that important question. I think the interesting balance that there is between uh, high-skilled and low-skilled workers and the way that uh, the report uh, preferences some above the others is disappointing and will be disappointing to industries across Scotland like tourism, hospitality, the agricultural sector and social care that rely on low-skilled workers. And I think while we would welcome the fact that the report states uh, a, a, argues for a lifting of the cap for tier two, that will not be a substantial enough change in order to bring the amount of workers that we need to the Scottish economy to fulfill the, de the demands that there are in the public and private sectors. With regard to the occupation list, now there is reference to this at 7.73 of the report uh, where there is a, 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 an acknowledgement that there is a difference that between what the short occupation list could be in Scotland or, or other devolved areas compared with the UK. This is a matter I have pressed the UK government on as minister. I met with Caroline Lo Noakes, the immigration minister in the summer, and pressed her on this point. And she gave me an undertaking that the UK government would look at how there could be Scottish government input and, and potentially wider from Scottish civic society and business into that occupation list in order to make sure it was fit for purpose. I am uh, pursuing a, a, a follow-up meeting with the Minister in order to continue to press this point and will also be meeting the Chairman of the MAC report and will be taking this matter up with him in due course. And Neil Finlay. Um, I have to say to you, Minister, social care workers are not low skilled in my opinion, but can I say that social attitudes in Scotland on immigration are very much uh, are very similar 
to those across the rest of the UK. Um, but does he agree that um, putting limit, limits on the number of people migrating to the UK is arbitrary? And what we need is a fair and humane and non-discriminatory policy that meets the needs of the nations and regions of the UK in an inclusive way. Minister. Again, I thank Neil Finlay for, for that important question and uh, share much of the sentiment in it. Uh, first of all, I, I absolutely value all skills in our economy. The point I was making is that the, one of the problems with the MAC is that it, it gives a hierarchy towards some skills more than the other and deeply value the commitment of social care workers throughout Scotland and in my constituency and, and, and that is the, the, the view of other government ministers. It's a highly regarded sector and we want those who are working in our social care sector to stay and continue to contribute and take care of the people uh, that we know, our neighbours and friends and those in our communities. In terms of the wider point, uh, which Neil Finlay was absolutely right to, to bring up around the UK government's arbitrary, insensitive, unhelpful, inflexible, unworkable commitment to uh, bring migration down to the tens of thousands. He's absolutely right to uh, point out the, the, the wrong-headedness of this approach, both uh, logically and in principle. And I think the fact that the report has asked for a lifting of the cap for tier two uh, suggests that there, there should be a shift in thinking on this point across the, across the board. Uh, and I would share the, the sentiment that he, he put forward in his question on that point. <clears throat> question number two, Jamie Green. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that £45 million has been loaned to Ferguson Marine and whether this is related to the provision of two new ferries being built under contract to Seamal. Cabinet Secretary Jim Mackay. Scottish shipbuilding has a proud history and a bright future. That's why this government will continue to support the industry to thrive and reach its full potential. I advised the Finance and Constitution Committee earlier this year that ministers had approved commercial loan facilities of up to £45 million for Ferguson Marine. The loan facilities were reported to Audit Scotland and the expenditure will be recorded in the Scottish Government's consolidated accounts. The delayed delivery of the two new CalMac vessels is disappointing, but the commercial loan facilities provided to Ferguson's will support delivery of these vessels and help the business to diversify. Jamie Green. I uh, uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Uh, it, unfortunately, it took uh, a number of FOIs and press reports uh, for the government to come to the chamber and tell Parliament uh, uh, the more information about these loans. Can I read the opening line of the FOI response? It says, the Scottish Government does not hold detailed information on all public funding, public funding provided to private companies in Scotland. I'm sorry, Mr. Ringo, so I find that absolutely incredulous. Why does it not hold those details? So let me ask some specific questions to allow the Cabinet Secretary to clarify this money. First of all, the £15 million loan. What was its purpose? What due diligence was done on the firm before the loan was made? And what analysis has been done on how that money has been sent? Uh, spent. Secondly, the additional £30 million loan facility was explicitly not to go towards the sea mal ferries or pay, pay for budget overruns in those contracts, but instead it was designed to win new business opportunities in contrast to what the Cabinet Secretary has just said. So can the Minister clarify for the record that none of the money that has currently been loaned to Ferguson has not and will not be used on the existing troubled ferry contracts? Cabinet Secretary. Well, that, that's quite an incredible position for the Conservatives to hold. They clearly don't speak to each other. It's just not true to say that I haven't informed Parliament of these loans when, in fact, as I referenced in my initial answer, I have informed Parliament, particularly the Finance and Constitution Committee. I did so on April the 24th and on June the 27th. Now, I'm under no obligation to present the information to Parliament that I did. I went beyond the expectation in the spirit of transparency to offer that information to the Finance Committee, and I think that's the appropriate thing to do. Now, I have to say that most members of Parliament understand issues of commercial confidentiality, certainly members of the Finance Committee, including the responsible Conservative members of the Finance Committee, understand what commercial confidentiality is and there are some matters that do stay private. Of course we have fulfilled 
uh, our obligations under freedom of information. Uh, again, in terms of support for Ferguson's, and I do think it's incredible from a member that seeks to be elected in the west of Scotland trying to undermine Ferguson's in the fashion that he is. But the financial support for Ferguson's is to ensure, of course, the delivery of the, uh, the viability, the ongoing continuation of work for the Yard, to ensure that they had working capital. That was the specifics uh, around the request. And of course, we want the delivery of the new vessels as well. But I think it's good for a government to engage to ensure that we can support Scottish shipbuilding in the fashion that we have. And I say again, presiding officer, without any obligation to do so, I wrote and informed the Finance Committee of the loans that the Scottish Government was providing. Jamie Green. Uh, so this isn't about whether the government should or should not support the marine industry. This is about accountability, transparency from this government and good governance, none of which I've heard today from the Cabinet Secretary. This project is already a year uh, delayed by at least a year and already tens of millions of pounds over budget. There is also talk of a dispute between the yard owners, the government and CMAL over project management and where the liability of these financial overruns lie. So can, can the Cabinet Secretary tell us in very simple terms, delays cost money. Who will pick up the tab for this dispute? Is it Ferguson Marine or the Scottish taxpayer? Cabinet Secretary. Well, let, let me very, be very clear on ferries investment. This government's invested over a billion pounds in terms of ferry services since 2007. We've deployed new ferries for the network, and that's been an enhancement of the CalMac fleet. Now, does the Conservatives not even welcome the fact that we are trying to support Scottish shipbuilding? What is so wrong with that position that the Scottish government is trying to support Scottish shipbuilding? 400 jobs, 400 jobs at Ferguson's. Is that not to be welcomed by the Conservatives and others eh, in the Chamber, including new apprentices eh, as well? Now, of course, the delays are, are not welcome. They are unfortunate. But it's still this government that's committed to that investment for those new vessels. And I say again that uh, Jamie Green may not be familiar with issues of commercial confidentiality. But of course due diligence has been conducted. This was, a, this was a question that was posed to me by the member that now seems more interested in other matters. Of course due diligence was undertaken in relation to these commercial loans. These are commercial loans with commercial terms and bound by commercial confidentiality. Is the member seriously suggesting we now shouldn't respect that and not respect the fact that the government's interventions ensured not only have we helped save the yard, but we are delivering 400 jobs in that part of Scotland. The vessels will absolutely be delivered. And the working capital issue eh, that was raised by Ferguson's, we have provided support through these loans. I say again, the more responsible members of the Conservative Party who are on the Finance Committee were alerted to the loans eh, over and above the expectations of transparency of me as a Cabinet Secretary. In fact, it was to be fully transparent that I offered that information eh, in terms of the loans to the committee who respected that. And finally, I am aware that, that a committee eh, that Jamie Green is a member of was invited out to the yard to find out more about the vessels and I don't think he has yet visited the yard despite that offer having been made. So this government will do the right thing by Scottish industry and Scottish jobs and if that means that a Scottish shipbuilder is building vessels for our CalMac fleet then surely that should be welcomed. Thank you very much, President Officer. Officer, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that it is the height of utter hypocrisy of a Conservative MSP, particularly one with a Port Glasgow connection, to come to this chamber talking down shipbuilding in my constituency, talking down high quality and skilled jobs, bearing in mind the absolute devastation his party did to shipbuilding in 1979 when they shut the yards, paid off thousands and devastated communities, including our own? Cabinet Secretary. I do I agree with uh, Stuart McMillan in, in that regard. I think uh, that it's been important that the Scottish Government, not just for shipbuilding, but in industrial interventions across Scotland, this Government has taken 
uh, bold decisions to support Scottish industry. And I think this is a good example of that. The Tories not satisfied in devastating Scottish industry, even now in opposition, are undermining and attacking our efforts to support the Scottish economy. And yes, it is surprising. It is surprising when it comes from a member who proclaims to be for jobs in the west of Scotland and Inverclyde to try and undermine uh, those efforts from the Scottish Government here in the Chamber today. Colin Smith. Officer, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that the costs for the completion of the two ferries being built by Ferguson's to serve the Clyde and Hebrides network are rising and the company have claimed this is due to insufficient design work by CMIL prior to them issuing the invitation to tender. Ferguson's have described discussions with CMIL as frustrating. So does the Cabinet Secretary therefore not agree that it's time to get CMIL, the government and Ferguson's round the table to resolve these issues and get these ferries completed as soon as possible at a fair price that delivers for increasingly frustrated passengers but helps secure the future of this important shipyard and their workforce? Cabinet Secretary. I, I actually thank the member for the way in which she's raised that uh, particular issue. I think that's a, a far more helpful contribution than simply the Tories trying to undermine the uh, loan support that we've given to uh, the company. Um, I am uh, clearly, as, as Finance Secretary, interested in procurement right across the public sector, and I think there is uh, something to be said for ensuring that all parties here do continue to talk to get round the table to ensure that we can make uh, the necessary progress. But in essence, uh, uh, this question was, was about the commercial loan that's been offered, and I think I've been able to show that I've absolutely complied with the expectation of Parliament, gone above and beyond in terms of offering that information to the Finance Committee as to further work uh, in relation to CMAL, who of course are the procuring authority here, uh, and FMEL then, yes, I think we can have further discussion in that regard. Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, as a member of the REC Committee, I've heard how important new ferries are for Scotland. We've heard that we need a new one to be ordered every year for the next 10 years. So I don't dispute that. What I'm asking the Cabinet Secretary is, is does he think that due diligence has been correctly done in this case when the company that the loan has been made to haven't submitted audited accounts since 2015, which actually raises the question of whether it is diligent to lend them that money. Just asking the question, where's your due diligence, Cabinet Secretary? Cabinet Secretary. It will, any, any offer of a loan, of course, we would expect due diligence to be complied with. It has been. There has been external uh, consultants uh, working in that regard, as well as uh, finance officials as well. Again, members would expect me to uh, appreciate and abide with commercial confidentiality, but I can certainly give I can certainly give the reassurance to the Chamber that due diligence uh, was carried out. This is a commercial loan with commercial terms. Clearly the benefits uh, to Scotland and Scottish shipbuilding are clear. But yes, I am surprised that now the uh, Conservatives are turning on the company involved in the fashion uh, that they are. I think maybe, I think maybe Edward Mountain, maybe Edward Mountain might want to engage with, oh, the Tories seem quite agitated this afternoon. It's your question, I have to say. Um, the, the Conservatives might want to talk to your colleagues, who of course are represented on the Finance Committee, in terms of the information that was raised. I've pointed out to Mr Green, I'm sure Edward Mountain, if you remember the same committee, I think you are, would have been given the invitation to visit the yard as well. And I've been quite happy to engage in questions that have been asked, or any FOI. Further to that, if the Finance Committee wants further information, of course, I'll engage positively with them. I'll remind the Chamber once again, without any obligation to do so, I volunteered the issue of the loan to the Committee, and I think that that was a responsible thing to do. And rather than dragged to the Chamber, I've been quite forthcoming in the information that I've presented. And of course, we'll add the further information that I referred to in my opening answer. I think we've got just enough time this afternoon. Jackie Bailey. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I wonder whether I could invite the Cabinet Secretary to continue to be forthcoming, and does he not consider that actually the problem here is CMAL and not Ferguson's, and when is he going to sort that out? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm sure that Jackie Bailey uh, well understands that uh, in relation to any procurement um, issue or dispute, it wouldn't be appropriate for me in the Chamber to take sides in that uh, regard. But I think I've referred to her colleague, 
uh, earlier on and to say that if there's anything further I can do in terms of procurement responsibility, of course I'll engage in that. Uh, and I'll be happy to, genuinely happy to engage with Jackie Bailey on this and any other matter. Thank you very much to the member and to ministers. That concludes topical questions. We'll turn now to our next